So at the end of the three-day weekend of the event, I came out the top out of everyone else. Right? So with that simple growth hacking strategy that you use, at the end of the day, it can potentially lead you to a lot of success. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Rishi. So I've been in the tech industry for around eight years now. So I started off at Uber um, as one of the launch team members for Uber Eats in Singapore. And I've gone through many industries um, around in, in the tech uh, world. So I've gone to Skyscanner. Um, I've gone to, after Skyscanner, I moved on to uh, an Aqua, which is like a social media platform. And now currently I'm doing growth marketing at another tech firm. So what exactly is a growth marketer in tech? It, it, a growth marketer, I would say, is a very generalist when it comes to marketing. So you know how you have like PR professionals who concentrate on PR. You have performance marketers who concentrate on like paid media ads and performance marketing. Whereas a growth marketer has to sort of encompass all these skills. But you sort of also find your way with, in between the whole digital marketing realm and find like what you really are good at and then you can sort of focus on. So for me personally, um, what I really uh, am good at is at social media and community management and also influencer management. So that's what I'm uh, predominantly focused on. Um, so currently in my, in my current role, I do a lot of social media management, you know, strategy, how do I optimize content, um, and then for the community management, how do I interact with my, my audience members, and for influencer management, how do I reach out to them, how do I negotiate, um, how do I even like uh, make sure that they post stuff, you know, that aligns with our own brand guidelines. So there's a lot of like work involved in that. And um, so, but to answer your question just now, it's really like there's no set like scope when it comes to growth marketing. So can you share what is the typical day in the life of a growth marketer? At work, it's a lot of like, uh, you know, like I said, I'm mostly focused on social media and influencer management. So a lot of it is uh, just doing a lot of out when it comes to the influencers, there's a lot of outreach, right? So, but even in the outreach, you just don't reach out to any Tom, Dick and Harry. Um, you, know, you need to actually go down to their profile, see whether they fit your, your guidelines, um, see whether their followers are real, see whether like, their, their, the location of their audience uh, aligns with your strategy, and then only then do you do the reach out. So a lot of my time is spent uh, talking to these KOLs via email, arranging uh, their life, uh, vetting their content, uh, negotiating with them as well on rates, negotiating on deliverables. So it's a lot of work that goes uh, behind the scenes for an influencer, especially if you're managing more than one. Uh, on the social media side, it's more of like exploring what's the latest trends that are happening. Um, I follow a lot of competitor accounts and also uh, accounts, accounts that are doing well on social and seeing what they take. Uh, or rather what takes and what you know, does viral and then from, from our side we sort of manage like a calendar of events um, that we want to post out and then we also create the content in-house right so a lot of times also spend uh, con on content creation for the brand's pages and then the last part is more of like the analytics part so like how uh, you know how effective the social media campaigns are how effective the influencer campaigns are how much traffic they bring in and all this like that so a lot of it is, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, work that is spread out across the week. But how I sort of manage my time is that I dedicate one day to, let's say, social media, and then I dedicate another day to just like focusing on influencers. Otherwise, it just gets like, quite messy and it's uh, difficult to manage as well. If you don't mind sharing, how much does a growth marketer earn? So it really depends on your years of experience, right? So if you are just starting out, I would say you'll probably earn about three, five to four thousand a month, and then you can range all the way to like five figures. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, like low five figures to mid uh, five figures as well, right? It really depends on the years of experience and also like the firm that you're working uh, in, right? But tech firms usually, if you're mid level, like mid level meaning about five years and above. Uh, you can probably expect to start at like six, five to seven, um, and even eight uh, at some points. Yeah, but it really depends on the firm that you're in. Because I know I've heard of people who are quite senior, but their salaries don't really like align with the years of experience that they have. So this isn't a typical job that you hear in universities, right? 
So can you share more about your career history? How does one land a job in growth marketing right out of university? This is a very interesting question because I have a very interesting uh, story, right? So, I mean, if you think of the term growth marketing, right? Um, take out the word marketing and just think of the word growth. So growth, what is growth, right? So essentially, you're just trying to, to uh, achieve a result, right? A positive result in anything you do. So it does not necessarily need to be in marketing. It can be in anything that you do, even sales. How do you do like growth in sales? How do you do growth in PR? Like how many articles you get, how many mentions you get. So I, I mean, while growth marketing is like the hot term, but actually it should just be growth, right? So actually in Skyscanner, when we join, we are all called growth managers, not growth marketing managers, growth executives or growth managers, because we are expected to have like a T-shaped um, skill set right where you're not just limited to one part of marketing or one part of pr you are supposed to like some growth marketers even know how to do coding like know how to do engineering as well so when i first started so this is my origin story um when i first started at uber right so i was one of like a brand ambassador for uber right and my first gig so for context as a brand ambassador you are basically your main role is to get people to sign up for uber Right. And I signed up for the role for the main reason because Uber at that time was in its like rocket ship phase. So anyone being associated with Uber would naturally have like a better chance at landing a better job in the future just because they have that on their resume. So I joined this brand ambassador program. Right. It was a quite a very structured program by from Uber. And um, but it was sort of like out, way outside my comfort zone because you literally have to strike up a conversation with someone whom you don't know, right? And try to get them to download Uber. And at that time, when you were to install and download Uber and create an account, you're expected to put in your credit card details. So can you imagine like you're trying to convince someone you've not met in your life to surrender their credit card details to create an account, right? So for me, uh, that was a challenge. So during my first, the first ever gig that I had as a brand ambassador for Uber, we were working at Beer Fest Asia. Um, and the whole, my, my, my whole objective for that event was to get as much signups as we can, right? So that was all the, so there were a few BAs, uh, brand ambassadors uh, working that event. And um, our main objective was to get as many signups as we can. And uh, we were paid for each signup, right? So we were paid, uh, I think, five bucks for each signup. And so when I first started doing the whole like BA thing, right, during the event, it was a bit slow, right, in the sense that I was a bit shy. Um, and uh, I was just thinking like how, how I could, you know, boost my sales. And um, what I did was because, you know, I told you that I'm paid five bucks per sign up, right. And at Beer Fest, uh, the currency is poker chips. So you exchange cash for poker chips, right. The poker chips has its own value that you exchange for food and drinks. So what I did was I ch exchanged 50 bucks in poker chips. And then I told people that, look, if you sign up right here, right now, I will give you, so uh, for some context, for anyone that signs up for Uber, they will get a $20 ride voucher that they can use at that time or any time. So I exchanged 50 bucks in cash. I used these chips and I went up to people and said, look, if you sign up now, you will get a $20 ride voucher, right? Regardless of uh, when you can use. Plus, I will give you another two bucks in poker chips for you to use anytime. And with that, my sales started like just going through the roof. And that also increased my confidence, right? And after that first $50 investment in myself, I didn't even need to convince people to, they didn't even need to give $2 to people. They just started signing up because I started getting more uh, confidence. I also started having more tactics, like reaching, just going to a group of people, just get one person from their group and the whole group will naturally just sign up and you are like just boosting your sales. So at the end of the three day weekend of the event, I came out the top out of everyone else, right? So with that simple growth hacking strategy that you use, it will sort of give you like very, it, at the end of the day, it can potentially lead you to a lot of success. Right. I mean, this is just one example. It doesn't necessarily mean it will always work, but that's how I sort of started in the whole like growth marketing um, uh, industry. But at the end of the day, I still like prefer doing social media and community management just because it makes me use my creativity more. Yeah.
Yeah, I love how innovative you were. <laughs> like to think of those strategies. So I think like what you mentioned, right? It's not really about what you study in school. No. Right. Uh, it's it's something that's more on the job um, that you learn, but you Correct. have to really like harness your creativity and uh, be unique in order to succeed. In yeah. This Actually, you know, when I was at Uber, there was this guy. He was an Uber driver. He has no degree. Okay, he has no degree. He's very young. I think he's probably like. I think maybe this year is probably like 25, 26. He had no degree. He, but then he always hung out with the Uber people at the driver support center. And then he was hired as a regional data analyst for Uber with no degree. Yeah, so that's like, I mean, yeah, universities will help. But at the end of the day, it's really like the things that you can bring to the table, um, which, and real life experience. Yeah, so that's, that's the most important, how much experience you can get in the real life. I love how much our our thinking of like traditional success is changing in these uh, in this time time and day. Yeah. yeah, I think this is like a perfect example of that. Could you share what is one achievement that you are proudest of? Like, what's the perhaps the most interesting thing you've worked on um, as a growth marketer? So at Skyscanner, I so we were you know COVID had hit right back then, and uh, we were all working from home. And what I did at Skyscanner was to put out a post, a social media post that went viral. When I say went viral, I meant like it was probably the second most viral post of Skyscanner's history. Right? Um, people were sharing it in random Facebook groups. People were sharing it in WhatsApp groups. People, it was also used as a case study by General Assembly uh, for their course. And what was the post about? It was just a simple, um, it was a it was like a game, right, where you you pick a number between one to nine divided by three, blah blah blah, and then the number that you get is where you'll be traveling to. It's just that the number that you get is always the same number regardless of what number you choose, and that number correlates to stay at home, right? Because at that time COVID, no one was traveling, so it's very relevant as well, and you know that you can't travel anywhere, so regardless of what number, you'll always be staying at home. So that went super viral. I mean, it got like, I think 25 million reach just from that post itself. It probably got more because there were a lot of people also like copying the post, posting in their own channels. They literally just like copy and paste the whole post without even changing anything kind of thing. Yeah, so I would say that would probably be like my biggest achievement, I would say. Cool. Can you share what is the latest growth hack that you did in your current job? It's a hack, growth hack for sure, right? and I knew it was going to work. It's just that there was a lot of like uh, things that had to be done on the back end to make sure it worked. And that strategy was actually using live selling to sell our product. So in case you don't know, live selling is essentially your uh, people that go live on Facebook and Instagram and they sell products to a live audience, right? So think of it as like, you know how you have like your TVC ads where, you know, you dial the number to buy the stuff, but it's that, but in life, right? And that has really give, boosted our numbers, right? Because um, these live sellers are extremely powerful, are very, very uh, convincing to their audience. And I would safely say we are the first ever company to actually use live selling to sell a product like ours. And I started that channel from the ground up because I have a network in live selling due to my previous role. And um, I'm managing that channel uh, end to end. So I actually reach out to the live sellers. I negotiate the commissions. I do the actual live selling sometimes. I close the, uh, I send out the orders and I also uh, invoice the live sellers. So it's an end to end management from my end. And that live selling has really gotten us probably more than 2,000 to 3,000 additional orders over and above uh, the current orders that we get. And the live selling when I first started it last year was actually the most, the biggest channel that actually led to our product market fit in Singapore, which then propelled us to launch globally. Thanks for the interesting insight into this whole new field. So to wrap things up, is there any advice that you can give to young graduates who want to go into a career in growth marketing? Yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to take up internships, right? Uh, I think having that real life experience is very, very important. Um, if you are lucky enough to get like an internship in a big company, you should take it. Even if it's not a big company, even if it's a small startup, you should take it because the experience that you get from a small startup 
to a large MNC is vastly different. And it sort of equips you with, uh, with various skill sets that you know, are applicable in both scenarios. Um, and makes you a lot more holistic in the sense of how you approach any job that you do. Yeah. Thank you so much for this interview, Rishi. No and problem. Do you think <laughs> this video will go viral? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Rishi, for this interview. And yeah, I, ho I hope this video will go viral with you sharing such insightful tips with us. And yeah, I'm wishing you all the best in your future career. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Bye. Bye.